doing my workout now and I wanted to share with you what I was going to do today. I'm doing uh, a little bit of shoulders and some squats. So I like to combine both of them uh, together on one day and then I typically will do, you know, maybe like a pushing day uh, and then a pulling day. Every week's kind of different. I don't really have a set regimen uh, for myself. I kind of, you know, I go with, I go with what I feel is good for myself. I go based off my energy levels and, and also what I did from the previous week. So some people would agree with that. Some people, um, you know, maybe understand that a little bit better, but I figured I'd show you what I'm gonna do today and what I'm already warmed up to do uh, for now. So I already did two warm-up sets. You always wanna warm up in the movement pattern that you're actually doing. So, you know, I could stand here and I could do jumping jacks and I could do, um, you know, I could, I could run around outside or something like that to warm up my legs. And yes, it will warm up the muscles and it'll get the blood flowing, but you also wanna warm up the movement pattern that you're doing. So if you're doing squats, there's no better warm up than the actual squat itself. Doing a squat at a low enough intensity uh, with a weight that you can handle 20 reps, something like that, 15 reps is ideal. Same thing with your shoulders, uh, doing an overhead press. If you're gonna be doing overhead pressing that day, that would be the perfect um, warm up to do. Don't get too caught up in well, I'm going to go over here and do the rowing machine, especially if you're going to a gym. You know, I'm going to go do the rowing machine over here. Then I'm going to go do the treadmill as my warm up. Just go to wherever you're going to work out at and do the exercises that you're going to do at a lower intensity, one to two times. And that would be a really good way to warm up not only the muscles, but again, the body for the movement pattern that you're about to do. I'll flip the camera so you can see. Otherwise, it'll be uh, backwards. So let's check it out. Okay, so the first two exercises uh, are front squats, so that's what the F squat is, and then BTN is behind the neck snatch press. So that's gonna be where I'm standing with the bar uh, overhead press, but a snatch grip, so a really wide grip, and it'll be behind the neck. So these two, I'm actually going to superset and do them right uh, back to back to each other, and then I'll complete them to their entirety, probably three to four sets of those. And then the squiggly line separates the next two exercises. So the um, squat snatch muscle up, that's a exercise that I got from Dmitry Klokov, uh, who's a uh, Olympic, uh, Olympic power lifter. And uh, you're basically in a full squat on the ground with a snatch grip and you're doing a muscle up. Uh, it's very, very challenging, great way to build uh, shoulder strength, upper body, uh, upper back trap strength. And then I'm gonna be doing a lunge press where you're stepping into the lunge and pressing overhead with, uh, with some dumbbells. Okay, so for the front squat, you always wanna line up the center knurling with the center of your chest. And when you step up to the bar, the bar should be positioned in between your collarbone and your nipple. That would be the proper height if you're using a squat rack like this. So I do two fingers on the outside of my shoulders, come up underneath, Keep the elbows high so the uh, arms are parallel with the ground. Get your right squat stance. Draw the belly button in to engage the core. And go down. This forces a thoracic extension so it's a little bit harder than back squats. Uh, 
sweating pretty good and uh, a little out of breath. So now I'm going to move on to the other two exercises. So that was the uh, snatch grip muscle up, but in the full squat position. So this is the exercise. Really, really good again for upper body strength, shoulder, shoulder mass, and then upper back and trap, trap mass as well. So I'm using these blocks that I made here because I don't have any weight on the 45 pound bar and I want to have it somewhat simulate the height that it would be if I had an Olympic uh, weight on the bar. So technically it should be a little bit higher than this, about an inch to an inch and a quarter higher, um, but I'm just going to use, use this. Now, I should say, if you don't have the thoracic extension or the ability to get overhead with a bar, um, you don't want to try this. I mean, there's probably things that you could do, um, you know, you could put something underneath of your butt so you can kind of almost, uh, you know, sit, sit back into it. Uh, to allow yourself to get overhead. I feel a little tight today too, even though I already did some my, my mobilizations and all. Um, but I'm gonna show you what the uh, exercise looks like. So because the bar would actually be a little bit higher, you, you'll be in this position, uh, lifted up just slightly. So your legs, your old legs and your core will be engaged throughout the whole movement. It's a uh, <laughs> pretty gnarly exercise. So you're here like this, you want to sit back on the heel so you can see the bar is already starting to come up. Um, it's just kind of uh, leverage. So if you're here like this, coming back, and then overhead like this here, and then coming back down. And uh, it's a lot harder than it looks. I'm sure it does actually look pretty hard because when I first saw it, I couldn't believe it. So here, overhead, and I feel like I'm leaning a little bit. But I'm also in bare feet too. So a lot of times when these Olympic lifters will do stuff, they're gonna be wearing Olympic lifting shoes, which have a heel on them. So it kind of keeps them a little bit more propped up. I typically like to work out barefoot, even if I have some kind of foot protection like my uh, Vibram Five Fingers, they're completely zero millimeter drop. So I like training barefoot because it keeps me more connected to the ground, builds the strength up in my feet, which then builds a strength up in my legs. So if you watched uh, any of my videos on grip strength recently, your arms can only be as strong as what you're able to hold on to, and your legs can only be as strong as uh, what they're standing on, which is your feet. So, okay, so the lunge press, I'm using two 20 pound dumbbells, and I have the fat grips on there. If you haven't seen my video about the fat grips, go check that out. Uh, I posted that a couple of videos ago. Really, really good for developing hand and grip strength, kind of like I just mentioned with the last exercise. Um, and they really kind of uh, decrease the strength curve uh, in helping you to gain, gain more strength. So basically, you'll get stronger a lot faster by using, by using these. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're pressing overhead, you still have to squeeze onto it and hold it. And if you're bringing it down or at least bringing it to your side, it's challenging your uh, hand a lot more. So what I'm gonna do, is start with a hip width uh, stance. You never want to start with your feet together when you're doing the lunge because then you have what I call the tightrope effect when you're doing your lunge. Because if you step, if you stand with your feet together, a lot of people have a tendency to step inwards when they take a step. So if you're stepping inwards with your feet together, uh, you're almost it's going to look like you're standing on a, a tightrope, uh, and your legs are going to be, or your feet are going to be right behind each other, and then you're going to be a little bit more off balance. So I like to start with my feet hip width apart and try to take a step directly forward. Even if you do step a little inward, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna start here, and because I'm gonna be pressing overhead with a light enough weight, I can inhale as I expand my rib cage. So I'll actually inhale as I go into the squat, or I'm sorry, into the lunge, and then exhale as I come back out of it. So start here, open or uh, open position or neutral grip position. I'm gonna go open today. So draw the belly button in to stabilize the core. Take your step, inhale, and then exhale. Come out of it, alternate, inhale, and exhale. And you always wanna come up onto the toes with the back foot. I don't know if you can see that, but you always wanna come up onto the back toes and think of dropping the back knee. Uh, never always just think of leaning into that front leg because then the back leg could really just kind of be stretched out and you're just stretching the hip flexor and the quad, which is okay, but you want to challenge both legs when you're doing the exercise. So here's what it looks like in real time. Okay, 
and that's the lunge press. So that's my circuit for today. Hope you enjoyed that. It's only four exercises. It doesn't take a whole lot to get the heart pumping, to get the muscles fatigued. And uh, as you can see, I'm sweating pretty good. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Always looking to help you guys out, uh, figure out how to balance your lifestyle, how to get the most bang for your buck uh, for the time that you have and how to keep a fit, functional, healthy body, mind, lifestyle, etc. So leave any comments below. Please subscribe. I'll see you next time.